All right, so Jesus is still sitting down with his dudes, right? And he's telling them some stories. And I'll be honest, I skip over quite a few of these stories because he tells a lot of stories. But there's this particular one that I think you guys are going to like. So there's this guy, right? He's this rich nobleman, and he's deciding to have a party, right? So he sends out all these invitations to his party. And the dudes who get the invitation, they don't want to go to this guy's party. Apparently he's severely uncool. So, like, they kill all the fucking messengers. Like, they abuse them and then they kill them. So what does the guy do? Well, who else is he going to invite to his party? He sends out the messengers again. And the guys do the same thing. And he does this three times and finally he thinks, you know what, fuck it. I mean, I've got all the stuff set up for this party and I really want people to come. I'm just going to invite anybody. Just send my servants out. Anybody they see, just bring them in. Bring them into the house. And then he goes up to his room to get ready to the party, and he comes down, there's a whole fuck ton of people, because obviously, you know, you run out in the street, and you're like, hey guys, you want to show up to a rich nobleman's fucking fancy feast? It's going to happen. So, there's all these dudes in there, right? And and then, and then they're all standing around, and the, and the guy comes in, and he's like, wait, you, you're not wearing party clothes. Get out! And he kicks this dude out of his party. Even though, like, Clearly, he's not cool at all, like, no one important bothered to show up to his party, but apparently the moral of this is that this is like the kingdom of heaven, also. Many are invited, but few are accepted. What the fuck, man? Is God just like a, an ingracious party host? Like, you're gonna just invite dudes off the street and then get mad if they don't wear the right clothes? I mean, homeless people live on the street, man. What did you expect was gonna happen? But anyway... Like, he tells that story, and he tells a bunch of other stories, and he kind of, like, talks shit to the Pharisees. Oh, he talks some serious shit to the Pharisees. He talks a little shit to the Sadducees, too. The Pharisees and the Sadducees are, like, two different factions of Judaism, by the way, if you didn't know that, and if I didn't explain it, I don't remember if I did. But anyway, he kind of talks shit to both of them, and he spends a real long time talking about the end times and, like, what's going to happen, and, like, earthquakes, and it's, like, going to happen real soon, and everybody's going to know about it, and it's going to be great. And, uh, then, and meanwhile, the Pharisees, like, go off by themselves, and they're like, fuck, man, we gotta put a stop to this. Like, we gotta get this guy killed. But how? Like, what are we gonna do? But meanwhile, it's about to be Passover, right? And Jesus is about to have him a fucking party. But being Jesus, he doesn't really plan this shit out. He's kind of like, yeah, disciples, go into town, just find some random dude, tell him we're having a party at his house. He won't mind. And, sure enough, dude doesn't mind. So Jesus and his disciples show up at this house, and they have, they have them like a fancy feast. They have them a fancy fucking feast, and nobody gets kicked out for having bad clothes or nothing. And um, and so like Jesus is, is just like, guys, I hate to break up the mood, but uh, one of you here is totally gonna betray me. And everyone's like, what? Me? No. And it goes all the way around the table with like Peter and the son of Zebedee and whatever, and they're all like. No, no, not me, not me. And finally, Judas is like, hey, not me, right? And Jesus is like, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything, all right? I'm not going to say anything, because I don't want to spoil it for you guys. And also, Peter, I totally am calling this right now. Once I get arrested, you're totally going to, like, pretend like you don't know me. And Peter's like, what? Bullshit. And Jesus is like, you're going to do it three times. And Peter's like, <laughs> and And meanwhile, Jesus is like, Jesus is like, all right, guys, I'm going to hand out some food to you. This bread, by the way, that's my flesh. And everyone's like, oh, what? What the fuck? And he's like, no, come on, it's it's cool. And then he's like, the wine is my blood. And everyone's like, come on, Jesus, we're trying to have a meal here. You already told us you're going to die tomorrow. Now you got to, like, make everything into cannibalism and shit. And Jesus is like, come on, guys, I'm just laying down the foundation for Catholicism, all right? And everyone's like, okay, fine. So then, that night, Jesus, like, goes out to this place, and he, like, prays all night, and he's basically just like, hey, God, God, Dad, um, is there any way that we could, like, do this differently, like, where I don't die? And God's like, nope. And Jesus is like, fuck, fine. So he stays up all night, and then in the morning, Judas shows up. See, here's the thing. Here's what happened. Jesus was, like, lounging in his chair one day, right? And suddenly, this chick comes up behind him and jumps dumps this whole bucket full of, like, real expensive perfume over the top of Jesus. And everyone's like, whoa, what the fuck? All the disciples are like, hey, man, we could have sold that perfume and made so much money and given it all to the poor, and we could have fed all these poor dudes. And Jesus is like, now, guys, that was a very nice thing that woman just did dousing me in perfume. 
I'm going to die soon. I think it's very important that I smell good when that happens. So this woman is granted like eternal grace and a place in all of the stories about me forever. And Judas hears this and he's like, you know what? Fuck this. Just fuck this. I'm going to go ahead and sell out Jesus for like 30 bucks. I don't even need 30 bucks. I'm just, this has gone on long enough. So he goes and he sells out Jesus for 30 fucking dollars. Like, that's what he does. And, and so the next day, like, Jesus is waiting for this shit to happen, and he sees Judas, and he's like, all right, man, let's get it over with. And Judas is like, yep, that's Jesus, and everyone comes over and arrests him, and Jesus is like, all right, guys, and, you know, they have this trial, but it's a total sham, because they totally have to, like, make up shit to charge him with and stuff, and he doesn't even offer a defense the whole time. I bet he could have gotten out of it, like, you know, pulled some fancy legal bullshit, but he, didn't, he doesn't feel like it, I guess. I just, I feel like he feels like it's a lost cause. Meanwhile... Peter is sitting in, like, a park somewhere, and some chick comes up and was like, Whoa, didn't you know Jesus? And Peter's like, No, whoa, whoa, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know that guy. And she's like, Okay, fine, whatever. And this other chick walks up and was like, Hey, aren't you that guy who hung out with Jesus? And Peter's like, Whoa, <laughs> you must be thinking of a different Peter, who is also known as Simon, and who was a disciple of Jesus and walked on water. And said, no, 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 it's not me. And then this third chick comes up to him, and he's like, no, no, I don't fucking know Jesus, all right? And then he remembers that Jesus totally called this, and he's like, ah, Jesus, you crazy guy. Meanwhile, Jesus gets convicted. Because, I mean, they pretty much already decided they were going to convict him. And luckily, though, it's a holiday, and Pilate, the big fancy important dude around these parts, has a habit of pardoning one dude on a holiday. So, but he, what he does is he's, it's like a deal or no deal thing for the crowd. Like, he gets two dudes, and he brings them up in front of the crowd, and he's like, which of these dudes do you want to pardon? So this time, he's got Jesus, and he's got this guy named Jesus Barabbas. I don't know why they ended up with two Jesus in the same prison, but they did. So, so he takes them out to the crowd, but... And he's going to ask them, but the thing is, the Pharisees just bought everybody pizzas so that they would fucking condemn Jesus, the, like regular Jesus, not Barabbas Jesus, name brand Jesus. But like, they, they, can, they, they buy them pizzas so they condemn him. So when, when Pilate's like, who do you want to pardon? They're like, Barabbas, fucking pardon Barabbas. And he's like, why? And they're like, because fucking crucify Jesus. That's why. And he's like, what did Jesus do? Pilate's like, what, did, what, did, what law did he break? And they're like, fuck that, crucify Barabbas! And, and Pilate's like, okay, I'm clearly not getting anywhere, but like, this is totally on you guys. And they're like, fine, it's totally on us! So they take Jesus, and they like, put a crown of thorns on his head, and they put him in his robe, and they like, they're like, hey, king of the Jews, blah, 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 blah. And then they like, whip him, and they make him carry the cross, and they nail him up on the cross, and he has to sit there in between these two assholes who just insult him all the time for three days, and like, People come by and they insult him, and then he fucking dies. It takes three days, but he dies while he's like, meanwhile, he's like, God, why did you make me stay alive for three days? And then he dies, and there's this huge earthquake, and then they bury him in a cave. But see, the thing is, they're pretty sure that the disciples, just to prove a point, are going to steal his body and be like, oh, where'd he go? It looks like he got resurrected. So they put this big rock in front of the cave and, like, guard it. But then on the third day, because he said he was going to be resurrected, right? On the third day... The, the bunch of people show up to watch, and the rock just fucking <laughs> moves, and this angel shows up. It's like, guys, check it out. Cave's totally empty. Where's Jesus? Who knows? Uh, but it turns out that Jesus is actually, like, on his way to Galilee already. He was just like, I don't know how he got there, but he's on his way. And so the disciples go there, and they catch up with him, and they learn some cool shit. And that's pretty much, like, the end of the story. I don't really know what happens to Jesus after that, but I assume that he lives a wonderful full life, and you know, whatever, founds, founds one of the world's most popular religions. So, the moral of the story is that with 12 really good friends and divine superpowers, you can accomplish anything. The end.